Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast. Today, this is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle, and it is just me today, Crystal. I have had just overwhelming feedback from you guys. Um, It's been a tough journey, let's be real. Like For those of you that have been with me on this journey for a long time, you know my story, you know... Uh, you know, having this huge channel that I worked on, this huge YouTube channel with millions of views. Uh, I put my heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into it for it to crash. Um, it scared me. It made me feel like the podcast was going to burn. I persevered through it. I've always persevered through it. It's kind of just proof to never give up and keep going. And I was really scared, you know, the, the old version of myself that died um, in 2022. I wasn't sure who was going to evolve after that. I didn't know who I was going to become. I didn't know who I was becoming. It was a literal death and rebirth. And now that I feel vulnerable and I've been sort of sharing this new side of me with you, it feels really humbling that you guys are embracing this new version of myself because I'm still going through this a little bit blindly. Um... I kind of compiled a list. I've gotten some private emails from you guys. I've gotten a lot of DMs on Instagram from you. And a lot of questions have sort of been coming through. And I'm really happy to answer them. So I I have a sort of list that I want to go through. And as I'm going through this, I might sort of remember other things that I kind of want to poke at and bring in as well. Um... With me now accessing the other side like I do, <clears throat> did I did I ask for this gift is a question. Uh, and you guys are so amazing. You're, you're sending me a message like, I believe, I believe everything you say. Like, everything you say is resonating with me. And once again, I am not here to force anyone to believe what I am experiencing and what I've experienced. I don't um, expect you guys to believe what I'm saying. I'm just sharing with you what I experienced on the other side and what I'm <clears throat> continuing to experience. Um, did I ask for these gifts? No, honestly, I didn't. Um, if you go back to my, my last podcast, I did solo. I talk about uh, my plan to sort of, I, I word it this way, ejecting myself from the human body, which is ses- essentially suicide, okay? I was at such an a low um, with my mother's murder and it was a combination it wasn't just her murder it was like the comp- the compiling of my father's death as well me feeling very isolated and alone I've, ar- I've always felt like the black sheep of my family as it is I knew that even losing both my family that none of my um, other family on the outside would come to my rescue I knew I was all by myself that was really scary And part of that low was also the fact that I could not hold the nurse accountable that killed my mom. That alone just traumatized me to the point where I really didn't think that I could heal from it. And I know I've met a lot of survivors of family and and loved ones that have been killed and murdered. And a lot of people look at me and say, my God, you healed so fast. Like it's for me, it's been 10 years and I can't get over it. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not healed. I'm just functioning. This is going to be a ongoing lifelong thing that I'm going to have to pull myself through. I have good days and bad days. I have some days I'll wake up in shock and I'm like, my God, my mom was murdered. Like it, it's a strange, uh, reality because I think back to my youth and like I would have never thought that was how it was going to end. Um, My point of this conversation is, is that was when I was like, I don't think I can heal from this. I'm going to hit the eject button. And that was when these gifts started coming in. And essentially my guides were like, okay, a couple of things. One, just because you end this now and you end your pain and suffering now, that doesn't mean you're going to like, it's not over. You still have to fulfill your soul contract and you'll have to come back. 
So that definitely was one thing that changed my mind. And two, I told you about this sort of life review that they gave me in my last uh, podcast by myself. And I got to see my life unfold. And I got to feel the emotions that we feel on the other side. And I'm sort of seeing the world now, the world we're in, through a different lens. And I could take this in a lot of different directions. And I can feel my mind going and just like, which which way should I take this? So I'm just going to try to take this intuitively one thing at a time of of sort of what I'm supposed to share with you because I also don't want to overwhelm you. A lot of you have been emailing me, messaging me saying, wow, you know, your um, experience with the other side has now triggered my healing. It's triggered my shadow side. Wow, I'm so proud of you because if you are brave enough to take that step and start healing on your own and doing shadow work and learning to merge with your shadow self, You are going to become the ultimate best version of yourself that's ever existed on this planet. I've talked about shadow work being hard and difficult, and it is. However, it is worth it in the end. And I'm not saying shadow work's ever done. I always talk about this. Like, you're always going to have something else pop up, something else to heal. But let me tell you how much lighter weight it is. And let me also say that I had done a majority of my shadow work by the time my mom had been murdered. I cannot imagine what would have happened if I had not healed from everything previously to where it led up to my mom's death. So then I could just focus on healing that portion, which I'm still in the process of that. But I would have been in a horrible dark place if I wouldn't have done the inner work and the, the inner healing before that. I don't even want to think about I can tell you I probably wouldn't be on this earth right now if I hadn't worked on healing myself. Um, Another thing I learned through this life review that I experienced, you know, like I said, I watched my life review. You're not really supposed to have access to that, but they thought I was getting ready to cross over, so they wanted to show me my life review, and I got to feel my emotions on the other side. You hear a lot of um, spiritualists talk about your higher self being in control right? That was a really hard concept for me to wrap my head around. And I feel like that's a lot. That's a hard concept for any human to wrap their mind around having a higher self, because in my head, I I imagine it as almost like a video game, right? Like your higher self is sort of controlling this avatar that we're in. And that was really a strange thought process process to me. And, um, I couldn't grasp it. So Although, yes, I do believe that is what's happening because I've actually met my higher self. I actually feel like I look like her today. It scared me the first time I met my higher self because I thought I was looking at a a doppelganger (laughs) because, (laughs) and I'm laughing and I hope that you laugh with me because in paranormal, a doppelganger is like an omen, right? Like if you see a version of yourself, you're going to die, right? Like, and so I remember being in the dream, being on the other side, you know, in this astral projection and I saw, I met my higher self. I met me and I was scared because like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die now. I'm seeing myself as an omen, but it, it's not like that. It's, um, it's crazy because your higher self is, is managing your avatar and your, you know, I, I was asking my guides questions like, you know, the person that I'm, I am right now, that I'm talking to you guys right now through the screen, through YouTube, through Spotify, am I the same person on the other side? And they're like, yeah, you're the exact, you're a replica. Like, like you're, that is who you are. Cause I guess in my mind, I was trying to like come up with these concepts, like the incarnations and like, I just don't understand it. And I really feel like there's a lot that we're not meant to understand, which is how my guides explained it is that this 3d planet is heavy. It is dark. It is very hard to consume. And that's partially why we come in with amnesia and forget everything from the other side, because it's such a hard planet. It's a hard, dense planet that we need to focus on what we're doing one step in front of the other. Also, that's why we are allotted free will. We wouldn't be able to have free will if we had all the knowledge from the other side. It would sort of be like, think of it as like cheating a video game, essentially. Also, kind of makes the video game funner with free will when you get to sort of grow up and be whoever you want to be. Like, think of all of the forks in the road you've ever experienced. Like, you can either go this way or you can go this way. You can get a divorce or you can stay with a toxic partner, right? So that is free will. We we incarnate here to make all of those sort of decisions. Another question that I had from my guides was, 
is there ever an accident that we incarnate because I've always felt like I was not from this planet? Did I accidentally incarnate to the wrong planet? And I feel like a lot of you would feel the same because I know my vibe is attracting my tribe and whoever's out there listening probably has the same sense of almost isolation on the planet. Just feeling like, why am I here? I don't understand why I incarnated here. I feel out of the blue. I feel like out of the fish out of water type of attitude. And the answer is, yeah, there, nothing's on accident. Like you, you can't accidentally incarnate. Um, you just can't. You do choose your name when you're born. I watched that in my life review, um, your birth name. So if you've gotten married or you changed your name legally, that doesn't count. Um, you chose your birth name when you incarnated. You chose your birthday. You chose your birth time. I asked my guides this, is astrology real? Partially, yes. Your entire astrology chart is real. Um, it goes back to like ancient Greek times. Like you can tr you can trace it way way back. Um, and India even has like a different sort of chart, which is also an ancient way of teaching as well. Okay, um, that was something that was gifted, I believe, from extraterrestrials, is what my guides said. And I'm saying that with hesitation because I don't want you to think this is like such crazy information. And when I say it's partially real, is that my guides don't like when people say like, oh, I'm a Taurus sun, right? Like what's your, what, when people ask you what's your astrology sign, the first thing is Taurus, right? I was born in May. However, it's, it's the full chart. So they don't like that society has dumbed it down to like just your sun sign. Yes, astrology is real, but it's, it's more than just your sun sign. It's the entire chart. It's the entire chart. Yes, you did choose that chart for yourself. Um, and it's interesting too, when I was watching my life review, um, I was born three months premature. I've talked about this on the podcast with my mom when she was alive and I had a lot of health issues. They thought I wasn't going to live past three. They thought I was going to be, you know, mentally handicapped because I, uh, was without oxygen for an extended period of time, uh, with my birth. And my guides showed me that my chart, the way it was meant to be set up, I had to incarnate three months early or I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't be on the astrological path that I'm on. So I purposely went in three months early, even though I almost died. And when that happens, babies are often extremely surrounded by actual angels to heal them. So. I'm a perfect example of that. Once again, I, I talked about this on a podcast with my mom. Um, she thought I was going to die too. She didn't think I was going to make it. And they, when I did make it and I was sent home from the um, NICU, which is the infant ICU after three months, um, they couldn't believe I was still alive and able to breathe on my own. And my guides showed me in my life review. At that time, I was surrounded by like, I'm shaking saying it because it sounds intense, but I, I was surrounded by 12 angels. And I know that sounds like a lot, but this happens often. So if you or your children, or if you ever experience a child, um, you know, in the NICU, they are so heavily surrounded by God, like literally. Um, I know that there's other things we could go into talking about like the loss of a child and we can do that later on, but like, I don't want to stray off the path of like what this conversation is supposed to be about. Um, so we'll, we'll get to those things later. Um, so I didn't choose to have this experience of, or multiple every night. Like I said, I was living on the other side for practically all of 2022. Um, I had some emails asking if it's still happening. Yes, it is. Um, every night, no. Every other night, practically. Practically. So I'm waking up with just new information almost on a daily basis. Um, and, and here's the thing, too, with dreams. Like, I have regular dreams. I have regular dreams where you think about, you know, like, 
weird situations or nightmares like I have those but this is not like this is where I wake up the next day and I can journal like 10 pages in a journal of everything I remembered from the night before and that's not normal that's not a normal dream you know like and I've even asked some of my spiritual friends and I'm talking like yeah Kat she does tarot and she's also very spiritual she's very intuitive but I've talked to friends that have abilities and they're like oh yeah you've yeah this is an ability that you have and no I didn't ask for it I think my guides gave it to me uh, I feel like if they were here they would say no you were supposed to have it this was the plan all along but I also feel like uh, my human brain wants to um, analyze it and say that because I was so traumatized from her unexpected death uh, this is the gift that I was sort of given so that I could help other people understand the other side. Obviously, my paranormal, um, this goes hand in hand with that as well. And um, I think they also were very, very uh, concerned that I was going to hit the eject button on this human body. So I think that was why I was pushed into this, I guess, spiritual awakening is what you could call it. Um, I have a list in front of me because I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. Lessons from, from this is, is seeing the world through a different lens really big time now. Really, really big time. There's another, and I've heard this concept before, but I didn't understand it until I experienced it. And I feel like this is really important to talk to you guys about loved ones who have crossed over. <clears throat> this includes my mom and my, my dad, okay? Um, your higher self is sort of navigating you through this world. You purposely incarnated here for a reason. You have a purpose, you have a mission. Some missions are small, some missions are large, right? Um, when you are here, it's really, and, and this, this is gonna be a hard concept for you to understand, especially if you haven't been on the spiritual healing journey long so it's okay if you don't grasp this or if you need time to grasp it the only way I can explain it is like 98% of yourself is on the other side right now and 2% of you is here so there's only a portion of me sitting right here if that makes sense and it's it's like it's almost like past lives, multiple past lives don't exist. It's almost like everything is happening now as we speak. So, and I know that that concept of time is going to blow your mind and I know it's not going to make sense. I, I, I don't even know how I can interpret this correctly for you to understand. Um, but my higher self is up there running my normal life on the other side. So is yours. And this is our avatar that is here that is meant to do whatever this specific mission is that we incarnated to do. And when you have family who's crossed over, like my mom who was killed, right? She's not incarnating currently. She's just home. That's really home. That's what I call it. She sees my higher self all the time, which is like the 98 percentage of myself, okay? Some people get upset because they're like, oh my God, my family doesn't visit me. I don't understand. Like my, my fiance passed away and he doesn't come see me and this and that. Well, it, I know it sounds crazy, but like they're up there with the full portion of yourself. This is only a piece of you. They would rather be hanging up with the full portion of yourself than the 2%, if that makes sense. And I feel like a lot of you are, are going to be like, whoa, that's way out there. And I know it is. I know it sounds crazy but it's true. So in the beginning, my mom was like, I was seeing her every day, right? And I, you know, all in my dreams, like astral projecting to the other side, I'm seeing her every day and it's cause I'm, I'm traumatized and bless her heart. Here, she's the one that went through this horrible traumatic thing. She was murdered and she's on the other side, like, I'm fine. Let's help Crystal get through this though. Like we'll have to, you know, pull her into the other side every night and like get her through this. Like she'll be fine. Let's just work on it. Bless her heart because 
and that was the concept I was having a hard time understanding. I'm like, why are you astro? Or why am I astro projecting to you every night when you just had this traumatic life? She doesn't view it like that. She does. She, that's done. Her mission on Earth is done. She's not angry. She has no remorse. She's good. She did what she was supposed to do. It's over. And it's it sounds a little cold. You're probably gonna look at me and be like, wow. Because our human brains are so 3D and they are so attached to this planet and we are so attached to feelings and things and especially like negativity and darkness. But that's not how we are on the other side. That's an earth thing. That's an earth emotion. And it, sh- it kind of shock valued me a little bit because I remember having this one dream one night where I astral projected to the other side. And, and honestly astral projecting to the other side is it looks a lot similar to like a parallel universe of like everything looks the same like it's weird when I visit my family on the other side my grandma she died when I was 14 my aunt she died when I was about 24 um my mom obviously they're my dad they are all living in houses in Lakewood Colorado which is the city that I grew up And I get really confused when I'm over there because I think I'm back in Lakewood living. When I I don't live in Lakewood, I live in Las Vegas. And I get confused sometimes and I'll say, oh, like, this is so great. Haven't been in Lakewood in a while. Like, I think I'm moving back to Lakewood. And my family's like, oh, okay, we'll see about that. Like, they know what's going on. I don't. Um, Back to me connecting with my mom, her trying to heal me as I was going through this mourning process. One time I was astral projecting to Lakewood, essentially, but it's a different universe, different parallel universe, wherever home is, wherever they are on the other side. They're literally like copies of Earth times like a thousand in different universes. I'm not even kidding. Um, And I, I couldn't find my family. And somehow on the other side, I like was able to like telepathically put in a phone call to my mom. I don't know how it works. I'm just telling you what I experienced. And I was like, mom, I'm crying. I'm like, I can't find you. I'm, I'm, and she, I think she knew I was like looking for her. Now, now remember this is what's so strange, right? Is on the other side, she's not my mom. She's like a soulmate and she's one of my best friends. And we've incarnated a lot together. So I think for a minute you could tell, I could just tell energetically she was thrown off like mom, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, oh, 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 like my earth life, mom. And she's like, oh, hi, honey, you know, how are you? And I was like, I'm so upset, I don't understand. Like, and and I'm screaming and crying and like throwing this fit. And she's like, once again, I know this is going to sound strange, but she was very disconnected and cold. And it was not meant to be in a mean way. She was on the phone and she's like, yeah, honey, like, it's going to take time. You're just going to have to give it some time, but you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. And I was like, I don't understand. You were my best friend and now you're gone. And she's like, I know, honey, like, you're going to be fine. And I know that sounds cold and the conversation ended, but the reason is, is that she's not here. She's done with this incarnation. Like, like. My human brain still has a hard time comprehending that because I'm sitting here and I'm like, but I'm on earth and I'm in pain and she was murdered. And how does she not feel that way? And how is she not experiencing the same like pain and trauma I'm experiencing? I'm sitting here worried and upset for her. And essentially she just doesn't care. And that's a fact. That's really a fact. And what she wants, and she's told me this over and over is like, you have something to do in your life. You have to keep going. Like, don't make this life about me. Like, your incarnation is not about me. It's not about my death. It's not about seeking vengeance. It's about do your mission so that you can come home. Whatever that is. And it's and it took a long time. I mean, I'm still processing it, if I'm being honest. Because my human brain, my analytical brain, is like... I'm not on the spirit side. Like, even if I am the 2% of my higher self... I'm still human. I still have human emotions. That's where it's my problem to heal and to solve it. It's not theirs. It's not even my mom's. It's my problem to solve it and figure it out. 
which is where I kind of came up out of this darkness and I was like, okay, it's time to function and pick the pick up the pieces, whatever that means and keep going. When I say I see the world through a different lens now, I feel like everything has slowed down. I I see everything differently, which is kind of what I want to share with you guys. Now, once again, I don't know where your healing journey is. If you even choose to take it, it's really, there's no right or wrong answer, right? Like you don't have to do shadow work. Like you don't have to heal through your trauma. Like you have free will. You get to decide there's no right or wrong answer. Is it better and more freeing when you heal? 100%. I would not regret. I wouldn't turn back time for anything. Um, I breathe in every single moment now and I slow down. And a perfect example is this, like I have dogs and you guys know that I have little, like little chihuahua dogs and stuff. And you know, dogs make messes. And I, I used to be the kind of person where I had OCD and I was like a clean freak. Right. And if my dogs tore up a stuffed animal, I was so mad. Oh my God. I'm like screaming at him. I'm like, you know, vacuuming up the cotton and stuff. Now I breathe those moments in. I sit on the floor and laugh because I understand that you, how do I explain this? Once again, the future doesn't matter. The past doesn't matter. All that exists is the now. And I mean that quite literally because in the future, some of my dogs are going to, all of my dogs are going to eventually pass away and I'm never going to have this moment again. I'm never going to get to flourish in this moment of them making a mess and me being mad. So rather than getting angry, I'm going to sit down and play with them and throw the cotton in the air and laugh and joke and be silly. I see the world through a different lens. I, I approach every single scenario in my life differently than I ever have before. I don't sweat the small stuff at all. I just don't care about it. Although I feel like when you've gone through something so traumatic, like losing your parents and like specifically my mom getting murdered, little stuff like, oh God, I just don't, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Like, I just don't care. I really genuinely don't care. Like I actually, I have, I want to call it alligator skin. That's what I used to call it. I used to say I've got really tough outside. Um, I can handle, you know, any criticism people throw at me on YouTube, especially after having millions of views. Like, I've had people throw death threats at me, you know, Native American slurs. Like, I've had people say horrible, horrible things to me, right? And there was a time where that stuff would hurt my feelings, but now I just... Pfft. That shows your damage and your toxicity and how bad society has affected you. It says nothing about me. I'm, I'm not hurt by anything that you're saying to me. There isn't anything anyone could say to me that would ever hurt my feelings. Um, I don't sweat the small stuff. I don't sweat the Twitter drama, the haters, the comments. There was, um, the other day I was on Twitter and there was like some motionless and white drama going on. I don't really follow the drama, but I do follow like Chris Motionless, obviously from working with them. And I didn't even want to read it because I was like, oh, this is so like low vibrational and like 3D. That's how I view things now. That like I've ascended and I, I've literally merged with my higher self now that like I don't, I don't pay attention to 3D stuff. It's like I just don't have time for it. Even when it comes to like the drama with like Destination Fear, Ghost Adventures, like it's so 3D, like I just don't care don't care I, it's I'm not affected by it um <clears throat> I think that stemmed from that nobody can hurt me in a way that her murderer did honestly I think that that was an ultimate destruction of my old self and no one can ever hurt me uh in that way again it's an interesting level of power that I have uh, that could definitely be used for bad if I didn't choose to use it for good, which I will, because that's a power that no one will ever be able to take away from me. I think I'm now realizing, too, that society and society's rules are more stupid than ever. It's another thing I'm seeing is, um, I mean, you could start with the Kardashians and how they've uh, proceeded to make this life of, like, BBLs and, like, fake bodies. And now everyone is injecting their lips like Kylie, which by the way, 
if you want to do that to your body, I support you 100%. I'm not shaming anyone that's ever wanted body modification at all. However, I think that it should be done on the premises of you wanting it for yourself, not wanting to look like Kim Kardashian. Um, so I, society is, I look at society different because I realize uh, how strange this planet is now that I've experienced the other side. There's no planet out there like Earth. Earth is very, I want to say very 3D and like low vibrational, but there is beauty in it. And I think it's important to stay in high vibration and, and look for the positive rather than lure in the negative and the dark stuff. Because that's not going to help your mission on this planet if you're high vibrational. But society is just, it's strange. And I, I don't like... Like, like even, um, even cancel culture, you know, like first and look, once again, sometimes cancel culture is meant to be a good thing, right? Like cancel Jeffrey Epstein for obvious reasons, you know, like, but it's like Michaela, let's use her for an example. She did like this mascara thing on, t there was like a mascara gate thing. She basically faked a mascara ad and everybody, you know, all society says, everyone's like, let's all hate this person because of this. Let's hate this brand because of this. Let's hate this person because of this. Once again, sometimes things are necessary to eliminate bad people. But for stupid reasons, it's just like unbelievable to me how low vibrational society is. So I choose to keep myself on a higher pedestal above all of the drama. And I'm just not interested in it because it's, it's, it means nothing to me now. Um, or society don't do that do this and really like the only rule is just like be happy and be a good person whatever you want to do as long as you're not out there killing people and like harming people or animals or kids then go live your life to the fullest you know what I mean like don't worry about what other people think about you because at, at the end of the day when you go home and you watch your life review and if you lived your life to replicate Kim Kardashian, oh, you're going to be mad at yourself. Oh, you're going to be so mad at yourself. You're like, oh my God, I was so much more than that. I could have been so much weirder than that. I could have been my own person because of that. And it's weird. Uh, it's a weird thing that society does is just like sees one person have to replicate, 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 replicate. That is something that I learned from watching my life review. Um, money. I see money differently for a few reasons. One, yes, we need money to live, obviously. We have rent to pay and bills to pay and blah, blah, blah. But when I went home, I've seen my house at home. I've seen, I actually own many houses at home on the other side. All of you do as well. Money doesn't exist on the other side. It's, we don't live in a society like we do here. This is literally one big monopoly game that we're living in. And um, I, I own, you can own whatever you want on the other side. And when I came back, I was like, wow. I, you know, there was a past version of myself that I wanted a big mansion and trust me, I still like those things. I'm a Taurus. Of course, I'm ruled by Venus. I love the finer things in life. I was royalty in a past life, but you don't take that with you when you go. So I have a different perspective on that as well. Also, I, from watching my life review, I realized I wasn't in poverty. I was definitely middle, lower class growing up and my parents, generally speaking, had that ideology of you have to work hard for your money. That is a generational curse. That's a generational mindset that you have to break in order to succeed here because society is based on money and it is one big monopoly game. And you have to change your mindset. So if you came from somewhere like I did where you didn't have a lot of money, you weren't rich, you did have to work hard for what you want, you have to change your ideology. You change it from I have to work hard for my money to Money comes to me easily and freely. There is plenty of money for everyone. There's plenty of money for me. It's not a greed game. And that will totally flip the switch on your life perspective. And it will also open up the manifestation channels to come in. Now, once again, do you have to do the work? Does it just show up a million dollars on your front door? No, you do have to do the work. But the first step is changing those past ideologies because those are blocks in your mind. Those are blocks that you grew up thinking like, I have to work hard for my money. No, you don't. I, I wish you could imagine and envision and meditate on it and have a life review and look at your life from 
where it was till now and what are you missing? Find the pieces that you're missing and try to put that puzzle back in. Even if you have a passion or you know, a talent that you were born with, you need to use it. It doesn't matter what age you are. I don't want to hear, I'm too old to do it. I don't want to hear it. That's not true. That's, that's a block you're putting in your own mind. You're stopping yourself. I want to stop to take that picture by the ocean, by the sea. I want to stop to take that picture by the sunset. Tomorrow's not promise. We incarnate understanding that tomorrow is not promised. Follow your dreams without expectations is something that I learned and I realized that on the other side that part of the frustration I was having with not being able to get Ghost Girl Diary signed was I kept having expectations like, oh, it's going to be this production company. Oh, it's going to be this network. And I literally started negotiating with every single network and every single production company and it was a roadblock. And the reason why I was putting the expectations on it, I wasn't letting the universe do its magic. Yes, I can still continue to do the leg work and work from this point of view, but our guides are our spirit team for a reason. They incarnated with us. They're also on a contract. You have to let them do their work too. And I was not allowing it because in my human brain, I wanted control of everything. And unfortunately, that's just not how it goes. Like, perfect example. I was watching a uh, interview with Taylor Lautner, who was the werewolf in Twilight, okay? At the same time that he had an audition for Twilight, he also had an audition for another movie with The Rock. And he said, I had put all my eggs in that basket. I was like, oh, if I get this movie, I'm gonna be the most famous person. Like, I've got this, mainly because he wanted to work with The Rock. And he, he was like, he knew that just working with The Rock would give him a big name. And then he went and tried out for Twilight, and he was like, mm, I mean, I did it, but I didn't really want it, but it's okay. So then a couple weeks goes by, and the callbacks come. He did not get the movie with The Rock, and he did get the casting for Twilight. And he said, I was so disappointed because I just didn't know what this Twilight thing was going to be. My agent said it was going to be good. Didn't know if I believed him. I just wanted to work with The Rock because I knew that, like, my name would be seen with The Rock. Little did he know... He was going to get this role in Twilight in a four-part series that he didn't know what he was stepping into, and he would be as big as The Rock, not a sidekick, or even bigger than The Rock. So once again, that was his guides that were in control of it, and he didn't even know it was he didn't even know it was happening. He didn't even see it coming. Oh, you know, another thing when I was watching my life review was watching myself fail a lot, right? A lot. I've had a lot of failures. I've had a lot of public failures. You're supposed to. It, it's so crazy because school and society has put in our mind that we're not supposed to fail. Don't ever get a, a red mark on your test. It will give you anxiety. And if you fail that test, like your life is over. And that's not true, actually. You're supposed to fail because that's how you learn. And that's how your success story comes out in the end, is all the failures that you've had. I watched a lot of friendships unfold in my life review that were toxic. And I realized this from my life review. I have always been a beacon in the night. I've always been a bright energy. I've always had high vibrational energy. My mom was the same. My mom taught me really bad habits, which aren't really necessarily bad, by the way. But my mom really had like Mother Teresa syndrome where she felt like she had to save everybody, right? And the problem is, is that not everybody wants to be saved. And for most of my life, watching this life review, I did the same thing with my friends. I noticed that because I was so high vibrational, I often, still to this day, I will attract the most damaged human beings out there. I'm not talking about you guys following me as fans. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about personal friends in my life, people that I call friends. And what ends up happening is these damaged people cling on to my energy because they see that I'm strong, they see I'm resilient, they see I don't give up, they see that I am literally willing to give the shirt off of my back to them, and then they, end, they turn into an energy vampire. Can't tell you how many countless friendships I've had over the years, which is something I've learned to spot from a mile away now, that if there's 
red flags coming up for this same personality type, remove yourself from their energy. And then when you take these people away, like let's say the friendship ends or it doesn't work out, suddenly now you're the ass. I'm the asshole, right? I'm the bad person. And it's really more of a reflection of them internally, right? Like, what? I let you like live with me. I helped you financially. I, I was doing everything I could to help you. And now suddenly you're going to like expose me and like, and I'm the bad person. You know what I mean? And what it really is, is it shows how much of a high level vibration I am. And you guys might, this might happen to you too. Kat and I've talked about it. Kat does the same thing. She attracts the same kind of people in her life. And you always kind of look at yourself internally. Like what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Like, why do I keep attracting these people? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with you. And I watched it in my life review, and it's just that you are a very high vibrational person and you were meant to incarnate on this planet to help heal others, and you just keep getting burned. And that's where you have to learn how to instill boundaries with people. And oftentimes, those people don't like boundaries because they are extremely damaged and unhealed, and that's when they will turn on you. And that's okay, that's when you release them to the universe. I also realized on the other side with this life review that we have contracts with everybody. And especially if you think back to poor relationships, bad relationships, even poor friendships, you have sometimes karma, karmatic contracts with them. So if you don't resolve those, which oftentimes if you have a falling out with a friend, they're not going to be resolved, right? You're like never gonna talk to them again. You can literally either in your mind imagine yourself ripping up a piece of paper rip the contract up throw it away or you can literally say in your mind like you know what i release this person i release all past karmic people from my life i i forgive you i release you i i don't need you in my life i release you to the universe and that breaks those karmic bonds and you don't have to reincarnate with them again otherwise you're going to have to fix what you didn't sort out so i would suggest doing that because i'm not reincarnating with these people again boo I am tired, okay? Um, now, there's one person that I haven't been able to do that with, and that's with my mom's killer. And I don't know if I'll be able to do that. My guides say, oh, you're going to do it. Um, because you're, otherwise, I will have to incarnate with her or a version of her again to heal. And that sounds terrible. So when you hold on to anger and resentment and stuff like that, that's when it turns into sickness and illness. That's how you manifest sickness and illness in your body. And I witnessed this even in my life review. This is why they encourage you to get rid of these karmic ties, bad soul ties to people. But it's interesting because there's one relationship that I talk about in my book and it's the title of it's like to hell and back. Okay. And this person that I was with, I was with for like four years. It was turmoil, total turmoil, terrible relationship. Um, I had a failed pregnancy with this person. Like it was bad. And I thought that this person was for sure a karmic, right? Like, oh, this is for sure a karmic relationship. And when I watched my life review and asked my guides about it, actually, that's a soulmate. I lived a lot of lives with him. I was able to forgive him and release him. And we were meant to incarnate in this life and have that turmoil. I was supposed to experience that horrible relationship in this life. I wrote it in myself. So it's interesting because a lot of times we want to blame God, right? We want to say, like, it's God's fault. Why is God doing this to me? Like, why is the universe doing it to me? Actually, you're doing it to yourself. Some bad situations, me, for example, with this ex, I wrote it in. It's nobody else's fault, which is also taking accountability, and that's also healing, right? Like, reviewing and, and looking back at your shadow self, saying, okay, we wanted to experience that. I also just, I release you to the universe now. I don't hate him anymore. I don't have bad feelings towards him. On the other side, we're friends actually. We hang out all the time. Not even kidding. So I'm just trying to sh sort of show you and flip this, the perspective of like, not everything you see in this life is what it seems, is sort of what I'm saying. Wouldn't it be easier if we just incarnated with all this information? But we don't. We're not supposed to. Um, a lot of you were asking about the 4D planet or 5D, 4D that we're moving into. And this is something that Dolores Cannon talks about. I asked my guides if this was real. 
because the Lurus Canon talks about the old 3D planet is shifting. We're shifting into a new dimension, a new universe, essentially. The, the planet is um, elevating itself, and there it will sort of split into two realities. And everyone's going to have a choice to either go in the healing direction or, or the high vibrational direction versus the planet that has all the dark, ugly stuff, the conspiracies, the Illuminati, the murderers, the killers, which is kind of the Earth's trauma that everyone's comfortable in. And you sort of will get a choice to go high vibrational or stay in this low 3D planet. And I asked my guides, I said, wow, like this is specific. How does this woman know this and is it real? And they said, yeah, it is. And I was like, what? So it sort of explained to me like this. Although we will still be on the same planet as those other people, you're not going to be interacting with those that version. It's going to be like a complete shift of reality. This goes into a whole different spiel that I don't think I'm ready to talk about. But I'm going to give you this so that you can sort of start to research on your own alternate realities exist parallel universes exist we have all experienced them we've lived in all of them we've lived on other planets we've incarnated on other planets and when this shift happens a majority of us will be taking it that have healed or that have done shadow work that have that are spiritual, I'm assuming most of my community were already involved in paranormal, we're already at the spiritual side, so we'll be shifting with the new planet. It's sort of meant to be in this location of taking away all the bad, and that's, my guide sort of explained it as this, they said, there's a lot of bad things going on in the planet right now. It's, it's the planet is purging itself, essentially. Like, you know, you have global warming, and I believe it's real, and, and they've said it's real, and, and we're damaging the planet, and extraterrestrials are getting mad about it. We're not supposed to be damaging the planet like this. We're not taking it serious. And that's where the two will sort of split. We're kind of already seeing that happen, in a way, if you think about it. If you, you know, you look at the people that, I'm just going to say it, Trump followers, QAnon people, the real like extreme right side is very, very different from the spiritual community. People that are about love, healing, light, acceptance. That's, it's already starting. You can already see the reality shifting. You see the states that have banned abortions, that have banned transgender. The shift's already happening. The people that are like doing darkness to this planet, when they incarnate or when they go home from this incarnation, and they look at their life review, they're gonna feel so dumb. They're gonna feel so dumb because on the other side, racism doesn't exist. You can take whatever form you wanna take on the other side. Color doesn't matter. You don't hate each other, you love each other. You're all from the same source. So you can already see the shift in dimensions happening. You just have to kind of pay attention. That sort of leads you to the belief of not living in fear. Um, this is going to be me referencing someone else for you to be able to research a little bit on your own, which is Bashar. So Bashar is this guy that, um, his name's Daryl. His human name is <laughs> Bashar. Let me, let me give you the right name for this, Bashar. It's called B-A-S-H-A-R, Bashar. That is his, what I believe to be like his, uh, I'm not sure if he's channeling his higher self or his spirit guide, but they talk the same. Um, He's a non-physical being who speaks through the channel of Dara Anka, which is A-N-K-A, Daryl Anka. Bashar talks about alternate universes, parallel universes existing on the other side. And I think that will give you a little bit more information into sort of what I'm saying. Because it's it's hard for me to express it because I I'm not expressing it out of channeled information from my guides. I'm expressing it from what I experienced on the other side. And Bashar said this about the darkness and the evil of the planet. At any given moment, you can shift into another dimension right now, literally. I personally like to think it takes like a night because you go to sleep and you wake up in a new dimension or a new reality. That's my opinion on it. And what I'm talking about is this. I, I know if I say this, it's going to sound way out there, but like, take this for example, okay? Kat and I were just talking about this the other day. 
cat lives in New Hampshire, right? I live in Las Vegas. We live on opposite sides of the United States. We do not live in the same realities. If you want to be technical, we don't live in the same dimensions. I do not understand her life and the way she lives, and she doesn't understand mine. Like, yes, she's visited, but if you even think about it, if you go across a state line or even a city line, you're stepping into another dimension. You're stepping into a new reality. Like, take for example this. Why do you live in the city that you've chosen? Okay? So I can talk about myself. What are the nearest cities? You can talk about like Reno, which is way up north, even like Lake Tahoe is beautiful. You can talk about Los Angeles, right? Like my, I was originally moving back to LA and then ended up in, in Vegas. Thank God I didn't end up in LA because it's a mess, right? After the pandemic. There's a reason you chose that reality. Is because that reality fits your lifestyle needs for whatever reason. Which I'm not going to lie, I love my palm trees. I love the shopping here is elite because like, you know, everything's new in Vegas. Like, so my reality here is great. One of the reasons I did enjoy live, moving to Vegas is the houses are new. Like everything's modern here. This city is full modern, which I was like, oh, this is great. Like growing up to Denver in Denver, which is kind of like a cow town, very Western. Everything's very old. There's haunted mansions downtown. I love it. It's very historical, but like, oh, wow, I get new shiny Las Vegas. You know what I mean? You've already created the reality that you're in. And at any given moment, if you don't like that reality, you can shift out of that reality. How do you do it? I don't know. What do you want? So for me personally, and it's, it's hard to explain, which is why if you watch Bashar and some of his discussions, it, he, can, he can explain it more because he's a higher being channeling, telling you through the channel where I'm just someone that went to the other side and experienced it. So I can only explain it as what I felt and what I experienced and saw while it was there. Yes, we all may be here on like the 3D planet and, and we'll see each other and interact each other. But that doesn't mean we're living in the same realities. Once again, Kat and I don't live in the same reality. We don't live in the same dimension. She lives a completely different life than I do. Bashar talks about this, don't live in a reality with fear. So I've talked about this with Kat. I have a legitimate fear of water, tsunamis, tornadoes. I have told myself, I will not live in a reality where I experience those things in this lifetime. I truly believe, no, I know because I've watched my Akashic record of drowning in a past life and a tsunami, and I will not experience that in this lifetime. I've shifted my reality. I will not experience that in this lifetime. I will not. Part of the reason I left Colorado was I will not experience tornadoes in this lifetime. I will not experience that natural disaster. Natural disasters scare me because I've died in past lives from natural disasters. Cat has died in past lives due to AI, artificial intelligence. She says, I will not live in that reality. And she doesn't. If you look at dark things like, you know, these, Bashar explains it like this. We are aware that dark energies are on your planet, like the Illuminati, the dark people, right? Like whatever murderers, like my mom. But you have a choice if you want to live in that reality or not and live in that place of fear. So personally, I say, I do not live in a place of fear. I do not live in a place with those things. I don't live in a place with sex trafficking, human trafficking in my personal reality. I don't live in a reality with the Illuminati. I don't live in a reality with all these dark things that happen to people. That is not my reality. I, I will not experience that in my reality. But that is a personal choice. Just because I'm saying it doesn't mean that you have to say it. And then tomorrow you will literally wake up in a new reality. Everything may look the same, but don't be deceived by it. Even Dolores Cannon says everything's energy. Everything you've created in your life, the screen that I'm looking at recording on right now is just energy. I have I've manifested the way this is because I need it to be set up in this direction to be able to stream to you on the podcast. Everything's energy. The way I present myself and I visually look right now is energy. I created this image of myself on purpose to project it to you. This is how you see me. This is my reality of energy that I projected to myself. One thing I think that we forget as humans because we incarnated without the knowledge is you don't realize how powerful you are. You literally create your reality around you. The problem is, is that you have to get rid of the muck 
which is healing and shadow work and all the trauma you went through. You have to get rid of all of the trauma. You have to reteach yourself. I don't have to work hard for my money. Money is energy, just like anything else, right? If I can create this in front of me, I can also create the money and the energy in front of me. And you have to manifest without putting limitations on it, which is where I messed up for a long time. And when I took those limitations off and started living my life more freely, easily, and effortlessly without expectations, that's when everything started just falling right into place. And the proof is working with motionless and white. I had a dream. So the story with motionless and white is I met Chris motionless. Who's the lead singer. I met him 2015. I think, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. We had mutual friends in Los Angeles. We met, he came up to me and introduced himself. He was dating someone that I knew and he was like, um, Oh yeah, I'm like a lead singer of a band. And I was like, okay, everybody is. Yeah, you and your mom and everyone else. Like, you know, and I shouldn't have been snurdy, but I like at the time I was a producer and I was like, oh, every, when you meet people in LA, everybody's famous for something, right? Like it's just the capital of fame and kind of like brushed him off. And like, I, I did see that they were making some success. I loved the song, Another Life. I was obsessed with that song, but that was about it. And I had a dream in June, early June of 2022. I had a dream. This is when I was kind of still living on the other side, still like consistently daily. And my guides said, you're going to work with Chris Motionless. Like eventually you're going to be in a friend circle with him, but you're going to work with him. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're going to. And I was like, Pfft. and at that time, like once again, hadn't seen him in years knew another life that was about it that song and the next day i went on to his social media and i saw that he'd like bleached his hair and like changed his persona like he looked different first of all i was like dang he's hot but second of all i was like and i was like geez this man is beautiful and i know i'm not the only one that thinks that but um putting that aside i i, I went to bed that night and i was like that's so weird like why my guides put this in my path and I had a dream that I walked into an auditorium and it was empty and they were filming a music video and I was there to film a music video with him. I could hear him singing. I know his voice and I couldn't find him anywhere, but I could hear him singing and I knew what it was. So the next day I put out in the universe, I was like, I'm going to be an emotionless and white music video. I don't know how. I don't know why. I just, I am, period. We're not going to put expectations on it. It might be in a year. It might be in two years. I just know I'm doing it. And um, two weeks later, he co started commenting on my posts. And then I was asked to be a part of the video. And I did makeup for the extras on set from Werewolf. And I was filming. We filmed that, I think, at the end of, was it the end of September? I think it was the end of September in Los Angeles. So that was June, July, August, September. Four months later, I was on set. Don't put expectations on your manifestations. That's what's putting you... Don't say, this is what's going to happen. And, and no, no, no. Like with Ghost Girl Diaries. Oh, I'm going to get signed by this company. I'm going to get signed by this network. No, no, you're putting too many expectations on it. You're messing yourself up. Just say, I am going to get Ghost Girl Diaries signed. I don't know how. The universe is going to provide. Period. Help me. And then you have to also put the legwork in to prove that that's something that you actually want. Once again, just because you want an elephant doesn't mean it's going to show up in your living room. How are you going to take care of that elephant? You're going to need to also buy a zoo and get zookeepers and pay for elephant food, whatever that is. It's, it's, a, it's a running machine. I don't know what that means. That, that's the first thing that came to my mind. It's like it has to have all the components and moving. And the other thing is, is keeping your vibration high. And this is hard. And I'm not talking about just manifesting. I'm talking about life in general. Like, what do you want? What do you want out of life? So for me, it's like, I want money. I want stability. I want to fall in love again. I want to be in a relationship again. I'd love to start a family. I would love to build a house. I would love to own a haunted mansion. I would love to obviously do paranormal for the rest of my life and have a series. I don't know if that's on TV or on YouTube yet, but I don't care. I just want the financial opportunity to be able to travel and not worry about it, right? Pay Kat what she deserves, pay security what they deserve. 
So you put that out in the universe and now you have to keep your vibrational energy up. So this comes in with who's in your life? Do you have toxic people bringing your energy levels down? Do you have energy vampires around you? Do you have depression? And I know that's another conversation, but do you need to get medicated for depression possibly? Do you need to get help for depression? Because if your energy levels are low, and I'm not saying you have to be toxic positive all the time. I'm not saying that even when shit starts happening, you have to be like, oh my God, it's such a good day, it's fine. I'm not saying that, you can still feel. But I'm saying you need to keep your energy levels up. Even through the bad days, you tell yourself, I can do this. I've got this. It was a bad day, but I can, I'm going to persevere. I can do it. And you know what? This is, this is an area that I kept falling short on too, was that I would be like, great, 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 great. Everything's fine. I can do this. I got this. I'm fine. And then all of a sudden I did. Well, the problem is, is that the universe doesn't know good or bad. It just knows energy. So whatever energy you're putting out is what you're getting back. So the second you dip in low vibrations, which trust me, I get it, girl, I've been there. I've had my depression was so bad. I was getting ready to cross over. How do you keep your energy up? I don't know. What are you consuming in your body? Are you moving? Are you exercising? Are you getting sunlight? Are you grounding outside? There's so many elements that go into this. There's not just one answer for it. Yes, it could be the people you're around. Yes, it could be the environment. But the only way to escape those people and escape that environment is by getting money to get on your feet, for example. You're going to have to figure out how to get your vibration up to do that. I'm not saying be toxic positive. I'm saying I can do this. It doesn't matter what the day throws at me tomorrow. I've got this. I can do it. Not the pessimistic attitude of like, I just want to die, which trust me, I've been there too. But you're going to have to look internally, look within, look within your body, look within your family unit. Are things not good for me? I had to ask that question to myself. I lost a lot of people in my life in 2022 because I said, there's a lot of people that can't handle my new version of myself. They're going to have to go. And it hurt. There's people I cut out of my life that I never thought I was going to cut out. Was it lonely and isolating at times? 100%, but I'll say this. When you start removing people that are no longer aligning with your energy vibration, it only makes room for more. It makes room for all the new good people to come in, and I promise you they will. They will. It is scary. It is scary, but also when you get to the other side, after you've cut out the toxic people that are bad and they're bringing your energy level, when you look back, when you come out on the other side, you're like, whoa, I didn't realize how badly they were actually affecting my mood, my energy. Like when you're living in it, you're sort of in survival mode, right? That's why I say this healing journey is a process. It's not something you're gonna snap and do overnight. You're gonna have to do it like an onion. You peel one layer off at a time. And some days you're gonna be tired and you need to honor that and rest. I used to be really bad about a couple of things. Resting. I. I, I used to think that manifesting meant I have to work 24-7 to get it. I'm not going to get it unless I work 24-7. Well, that was true. That was the reality that I was creating. That's not a fact if you change your perspective on it. Once again, money comes to me freely and easily and effortlessly. It's not about how much work you put in. It's about the vibrations that you're sending out. And I'm dead serious when I say that. You don't have to work 24-7 to get it. But what's the frequency? What's the vibration? Whatever your vibrancy, whatever you're vibrating at, whatever frequency you're vibrating at is what's going to be shadowed back to you. If you're dark and depressed and negative, nothing's working out for you. It just keeps getting worse. And trust me, I know. I'm not being unrealistic. My mom was murdered. I get it. Sometimes when you get down in the dumps, it's hard to get back out. I went through that for an entire year, but it's also a choice. I had a choice to sit there and die with my mom or get up. And I chose to get up. And I hope that you do the same because I'm telling you, when I had that life review, the only feeling I had on the other side was regret, instant regret. When I was watching my life review, I wasn't even thinking about my mom's murder or death, which is initially the reason I was going to hit the eject button. 
I was thinking about, oh my God, I didn't finish what I was there to do. I was supposed to do this and that and this and that. And, you know, you think about it as like in this perspective too. I was talking to a friend of mine that had, a, uh, her husband was murdered. Horrible, terrible, terrible, terrible. And she uh, has been depressed for like good 10 years. She hasn't been able to get out of it. And she's been listening to my podcast and she's like, she told me, I had permission to share this by the way. She said, give it to me like your spirit guides would tell me. She has two young kids at home. And she said, give it to me the way your guides gave it to you. I want, I want to be shocked. I want a shock value. I want you to shock me. I want you to tell me what I should do. And I said, okay. Your husband's fine. He's on the other side. He's waiting for you to come home. If you come home with him, he's going to be upset that you left your kids. And if you spend another day depressed, you are missing every single minute with your child growing up and you will never get that minute back. And she was like, <gasps> it, it shocked her, it scared her. It scared her because I said, you're, you're, because she, she's like, some days I'm so depressed. I can't take him to school. I'm like, oh, someday you're going to look back and regret that. You're going to be pissed at yourself because now not only did you, of course you're depressed. I understand. Trust me. I've been through it. I've been through the worst of the worst, but now you have also caused trauma on your children and now they have to grow up and undo the trauma. And then you're going to get old one day and look back and be like, oh my God, I was so busy being depressed, which you have the right to be. Remember, it's a choice. It's free will. But now you've also just sacrificed your kids in this, in the same process of, it was already bad enough that your husband died, but now your hu your kids are literally sitting there like, it feels like we lost our mom too, and they don't deserve that. Once again, it's a choice. And I know, it's, I know it sounds hard, but that's what a spirit guide would say to you. Get up. If you go home, fine. Just know that you're gonna have to come back again. Ugh, no thank you, I'm good. I'm gonna heal and I'm gonna keep going is what I'm gonna do. I went through enough. I'm not going to relive this again. It's been hard enough. But now, on the flip side, now that we've gone through this trauma, and once again, I'm still healing too, where do we go from here, right? We learn that magic is real. Your guides communicate with you every single day. Pay attention to the signs. If you're seeing animals or birds or a crow or whatever, and it keeps showing up, that's your guides trying to communicate something. You're seeing numbers, that's your guides trying to communicate something. They're trying to protect you. If, if you you know, hit a red light and you were late for work, it was for a reason. You may have missed a really terrible car wreck by one second. Don't get frustrated. Live in the moment. Be appreciative of the now. We all have trauma, and I hate to tell you this, but we incarnated to experience it. Now, my mom was not meant to be murdered. No one is meant to be murdered, right? Which is, if, if you're out there and you've experienced what I have, it's the worst pain excruciating pain losing a child is just horrible losing anyone through that kind of death is horrible but we do understand that we come in with that possibility because of this planet and if you're following me I'm gonna assume that you're also some sort of star seed or light worker too because everything I'm saying is resonating with you once again we know each other on the other side we've incarnated together before um, we incarnate to experience trauma because this planet is hard. I talk about this in my book, which is weird because I look back at my book, which I released in 2021, and I feel like I was just skimming the surface of like learning about my spirituality and the other side. And I say in my book that if you compare this planet to something like Mario, Mario World, and this Earth is like a Bowser level. It's hard. It's like the hardest of the hard. You purposely incarnated here. You incarnated here to experience the trauma to see how powerful of a manifest you are to get out of the trauma. Once again, you can have a little tiny life mission, life path of just being a mom. Good, great. If that's what you came to experience, great. You're doing your job. If you have a talent though that you've been sitting on and you know you're meant to do something bigger with it, oh, you're gonna regret it when you go home. Don't sit on it anymore. Something I learned too watching my, uh, or talking to my guides, blood's not thicker than water, that's actually real. Oftentimes, as a light worker, or spiritualist, or someone that is higher vibration from the other side, star seed, whatever, you will not incarnate into a family that's your soul tribe. Oddly, 
like I am a total black sheep. I do not resonate with people in my bloodline at all. And that is once again a test to see how strong you are because you are a powerful manifester. You're not giving yourself enough credit. Soul tribes are real. Soul families are real. Cat is part of my soul family. These are people that you incarnate with over and over. My mom is my soul family. Um, she's one of my best friends on the other side. Healing is an option. You don't have to do it. Healing your inner child is an option. Healing your generational trauma is an option. Um, but if you do feel like you're on a higher level purpose path like me on the spiritual side, and I, I really think that most of the paranormal community is because we have this fascination with death with the other side, um, we're meant to heal those things so that other generations in the future don't have to go through what we did. And it's hard, but phew, the trauma. I mean, I make jokes about it with Kat, but it is serious. It, it is worth it in the end. Um, another rule that I found, it was something interesting. You're not supposed to change anyone or force anyone to do anything. Um, I know that sounds like real basic, but my mom, once again, I'm a, you know, she was a healer. She was. She wanted to save everybody. But that's not, you're not really supposed to do that. It is free will. If you choose not to heal, that's not the wrong answer. That is the reality you're creating. And that is your reality, period. It's not a wrong reality compared to mine. It is just your reality. So you're not supposed to change anybody. Um, you're not supposed to force anybody to do anything. Just because I'm healing doesn't mean everyone around me is supposed to heal. No, no, no. In fact, that's why I ended up losing a lot of friends is that they fell off. It's not your job to force people to change. It's your job to live your path authentically and with purpose and to fulfill your mission. That's the only job that you have as a person. Other people that are wrapped up in the 3D have to figure it out for themselves. And that also will probably mean them living in another dimension from you. I was thinking about this the other day too, like trying to understand and explain dimensions is so hard in this 3D brain because we're so locked down by this heavy earth and this like gravitational force. But I was thinking about this, okay? I have this ex-boyfriend named Grant, okay? And I love that guy. Like. This is someone I talk about in the book. I, I tried to be with him for years. I wanted to work it out. I thought he was my twin flame for a long time. Turns out he was like more of a false twin flame. But he uh, chose a few years ago to stop all communication with me. And I know some of you are going to be like, well, yeah, he's your ex. Like You shouldn't be talking. And you're right. I agree. I don't have any reason. Like, I don't want to date him still, although we have a very long history that's not my interest, but I would love to catch up to him. I would love to catch up with him and say, hey, how have you been? How's it going? How's life? Not necessarily even like have lunch. He lives in Colorado anyway, but I would just love to be like, hey, you know what? Missed you. I hope life's well, but he has chosen to live in a reality without me. That's a perfect example of showing how you live in a different dimension from someone. If you don't talk to anybody or if you don't talk to someone specific that you wish you did, or you don't see that person, they're not a part of your life, they're not living in the same dimension as you, they're not in your reality. And that's like the easiest way to explain it. Isn't that easy? It makes sense. It's like, pff, we want to try to like, you know, understand these things as humans and like, honestly, magic exists and it's just, there's no way to explain things sometimes. But this was an easy way for me to understand and make sense of different dimensions. Yes, he may be on this physical earth, the same earth as me, and we're incarnated at the same time, but we are not in the same reality, like at all. And I don't think we ever will be for the remainder of our human life. So that's another way to explain it. Twin flames. There's been a lot of people asking me questions on this. I'm not really ready to do a, a twin flame podcast yet because I think that needs to be like a whole thing by itself. And I need to really write some, some notes down for that. But I do want to say this. Are twin flames real? Yes. I think that they got blown out in the media quite a bit and they are extremely rare. Extre this is my guides. I've asked my guides this. I am a twin flame. I am incarnated with my twin flame. They don't like the term twin flame. They like the, the term twin soul. They like the term twin soul. Um, but twin flame is something that resonates with humans and that's just sort of where it sort of got taken off from. But if you are a twin flame or incarnated with a twin flame, 
a piece that is always left out of the puzzle is your spirit team will confirm this through dreams. But the number one thing is your spirit team will confirm this. And unfortunately, I think with like Megan Fox and MGK, everybody out there is dreaming of having like a twin flame and it's not quite what people think it is. You're not necessarily meant to be in union together. You may just incarnate to do separate missions. But just understand that this will be heavily confirmed through your spirit team. So if you're unsure in any way, shape, or form that that person is my twin, they're probably not. Because your team, your spirit team will have it in your face constantly. And I had this experience even before I had the spiritual awakening. But I feel like that's really like important. And also just be very uh, aware of where you're getting twin flame information from. Oftentimes people will be more likely to incarnate with a high level soulmate, which is someone that, so like there's soulmates, there's karmic partners, and then there's high level soulmates. And high level soulmates are people that you've had a lot of, like the most incarnations with even over your twin flame. And oftentimes that's people that have been like married for 20 years or 60 years. And it's because you've lived so many lives together. It's just comfortable, right? But high level soulmate is not the same as a twin flame, but they are high level soulmates are way, way more common than twin flames are. Twin flames are usually here for a very, very specific purpose. And it's, there's a lot of turmoil that goes on because oftentimes they incarnate with very hard, difficult lives and life paths, although similar paths. And in order for them to even come back into union, they have to go through all these spiritual awakenings and get rid of all of this trauma and shadow work in order to proceed. And most humans are not willing to do that. And unfortunately, I see that a lot on TikTok where people will talk about twin flames and I can immediately tell that they're not one because they're very much stuck in the 3D of the trauma and the drama and he said she said stuff and that is immediate sign that that your spirit team hasn't communicated with you yet that that person is your twin so and once again extremely rare extremely rare there's a few twin flame readers that i do follow on tiktok but i i block people left and right because i a lot of things people say are like not accurate so just use your discernment if you need to to know if that person is your twin flame, I would ask your guides for a sign or a message in your dreams because they will immediately be like, okay, I'll tell you. Um, and maybe you want to live in a delusional state and you don't want to know the answer, so you don't want to ask. So, And that's okay too. Once again, you can create your own reality. There's a lot of toxic stuff about twin flames and twin flames are not... The, the last thing I'm going to say about twin flames is twin flames will never hurt each other. They will never, they're never interested in causing pain on each other. There could be some drama. There could be a little bit of trauma, but you're not talking about like a, a horrible, horrible relationship because the, the minute they start to feel energy and cause pain, they will peace out from each other. They don't want to hurt each other because essentially you'd be hurting yourself. So just keeping that in mind, that goes a lot deeper. Reiterate that this exact moment in time will never be relived again. And I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. So if your time is ticking on the other side, whatever that means, you have 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years left, whatever. What are you going to do with the rest of the time that you have here? I think that a lot of times I was watching the other day, this, um, this woman is like 90 years old and she knows that she doesn't have a lot of time left. And so she decided she's going to travel the world and she started with skydiving. She's always wanted to skydive and she went skydiving. I think that we get to a point when we are soon to expire. I don't want to say she's going to die in a week. I don't mean that. I just mean she knows her time's coming to an end and she knows, oh, this is the time I got to fit all this in. I got to, I got to visit every, every continent, every country, blah, blah, blah. Don't wait till you're 90 to do it. If you don't have the money to travel and that's what you want to do, then start putting out your manifestations into the world. Hire your vibration and bring it in. Start bringing it towards you. Stand on the wheel of karma. Oh my God, karma's real. If I would have 
ejected myself from this body and gone home, I would have created karma for myself. I would have had to come back in another life and relive the same life, but I would have had karma on top of it because I ejected myself. Please get off the wheel of karma and heal. Don't, don't create karma for yourself. That's why anyone from my past that I don't talk to anymore, anyone I've had bad blood with, and that includes family, I release you. I release you. I have no ill will towards you. I, I don't care. I just know that I have a mission to complete while I'm here. Understanding the other side is complicated, and I think it's just because of our, our 3D brains. But if you guys are sticking with me, we're getting somewhere. We came here to learn, essentially. Earth is one big school. I used to have really, really bad imposter syndrome my whole life. My whole life I had imposter syndrome. Never thought I was good enough. That changed last year. Am I saying I'm better than everyone else? No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm better than the old version of me. The old version of me is dead and I am completely confident in my power now. And that happened when I looked back at my life review and I watched my documentaries on the other side and I was like, oh my God, I'm a filmmaker. How come I've never, I'm proud of, I've won six film festivals. Like I should be proud of that. Like I've done a lot. I've done a lot and I'm not done and I'm not done. Why do I have, no, you're not going to be this girl that questions herself. You're a freaking goddess. You are a goddess. So stand in your goddess energy. Be a divine feminine. Understand your power. Understand your worth. Have firm boundaries. Be the nicest person in the room with the firmest boundaries. And remember who you are. And I did. And I, I dropped all of that bad energy. And I think that that imposter syndrome was also manifesting bad things into my life. So I wish you could all have the same experiences as me. But if you can't, and you can't experience the other side like I can, let me teach you and let me show you through my eyes and understand that you are one in one. There is no one else like you. There's no one meant to be like you. Stand in your power. You are a powerful person. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Be, be weird. Be different. Go do whatever your passion is. Just don't be a bad person. Don't, don't kill people. Don't hurt kids. Don't hurt animals. But go live your life to the fullest. Don't go home and regret anything. Don't regret anything. Make a list. Make a vision board. Start working on it now. How are you going to change your life? I'm going to end this podcast here. I'd love to do some more podcasts about Twin Flames, about dream work, about meditation. I'd even like to talk about some of my past lives because I think they'd be fascinating to talk about because I got to watch them, relive them. When I accessed my Akashic Records, everyone does it kind of differently. Some people actually look at books and like read through books like in their meditative state or, or when they're visiting the other side. For me, I got to actually relive it. And that includes some dark stuff. I even got to relive some of my past lives uh, death, which was not fun. Um, so yeah, I'd like to talk about that stuff too. Other planets that I lived on and I got to see on the other side. I wish it wasn't so dense here. If you guys could see what I see, I'm going to leave on this note. First of all, there's so much more than we know that's out there. And second of all, although there's muck and although there's darkness and although this planet is purging right now, all the bad stuff before we shift into a new dimension, this planet's pretty cool too. There is some cool stuff in it. That includes your favorite shows, your favorite TV shows, your favorite restaurants, your favorite places to shop and go, traveling the world. Hold on to those really positive things, the people that you love, rather than being in fear and living in fear of all of the negative. Because that light stuff, the good stuff, will always be way more powerful than the negative. And the last thing that I wanted to give you guys kind of a chat about was someone asked me how I felt about paranormal now, like when you ghost hunt and you go on the other side. What's my opinion? it's changed. So my old view on paranormal was that all entities were stuck here. And when you go paranormal investigate, um, you're interacting with an ent entity that's stuck here. Okay. That is true in some cases. Some cases you still have free will when you die to cross over or not cross over. 
but it's kind of like the gray zone, what I talk about, and it's a void, and, and you're not really meant to live there. So I don't know why you'd want to go there, okay? Most of the time, we are interacting with another dimension that has overlapped onto Earth. And I think that a lot of these haunted old locations are portals. And when you go in there, to, and I think that even the heaviness and the weight, you know, when you go into a haunted location like the Stanley Hotel, there are certain areas you can feel it. You're walking and it just feels like a weight is on your shoulders. That's you walking through like a portal, a wormhole, whatever you want to call it. And that's when you're able to interact with the other side. And it's perfect. When I was asking my guides on the other side about this, they gave me the example of this ghost named Lucy that haunts the Stanley Hotel. Okay. She haunts the concert hall in the Stanley Hotel. And every time you go in there, Lucy, she's like, she loves interacting with you. She'll turn stuff on. Like she, she's living in another dimension in like the 1970s. She sees it like the 1970s. So although like to us, she's dead, but think about it. Even when sometimes you ask questions on ghost hunting, like paranormal, like, oh, are you dead? And they're like, no, or whatever. Well, automatically we think, oh man, this entity's stuck here. They're dead and they don't know it. You know what I mean? Not now, once again, sometimes, yes, not, I think majority of the time it's you interacting with another dimension, 100%. And I don't think people realize, like, how cool is that? You're walking into another portal. You're walking into a whole other time. You don't even know it. Lots of my views have changed. We'll talk about it. I think it's, I think it's great. I think this is going to, this new gift that I have, whatever it is, is going to help me way more interact with the other side. So I can't help but to be excited about the future with ghost hunting with this. Um, some people have asked me some of my other gifts. Like, I have some auditory things happening. I can sometimes see my spirit guides, uh, my spirit team. They appear, though, as very uh, bright, bright flashes of light is a way I can explain it as because they're on a different frequency, so I can't see like a, a person standing there. I can hear things audibly sometimes. I think that I'm just on the verge of this whole thing unfolding and, and developing these gifts, and it's kind of cool that I get to do these podcasts and talk about them as they're going because I don't really know what's happening either. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I am a Cancer Rising. Cancer Rising is, are known for being the most intuitive psychic out of the entire Zodiac. So I assume that's why I chose that. Um, also, I'm an Aquarius moon, and my moon is in the 8th house of death, which is Scorpio energy, but that's automatically just me being able to converse with the other side. So anyway, I love you guys. I'm just saying this is what I'm experiencing, and it's kind of cool you get to be here with me. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give us a like and a comment and uh, a thumbs up because that helps boost the channel. If you have not downloaded our podcast, please do so. It's The Ghost Girl Diaries or Ghost Girl Diaries. It can be found in all major streaming services, including Spotify and Pod, uh, Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys so much. We will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Good night.